Welcome back to the Black Media Man Cave, and today I wanted to do something a little different. Not only has it been a while since I've reviewed a TV show, but this time, I didn't want to just talk about what I thought about the show's entire season and its themes and stuff. I decided to just give three things I like about it and three things I don't like, to make things more concise. In this video, I'ma talk about season two of the TV show, Them, subtitled The Scare. To be completely honest with y'all, I totally forgot that I reviewed the first season of Them way back in 2021. It was only like my 12th video, so you'll have to give me a pass on that one. I do remember watching it though, and not really liking it that much. I went back to watch my video of it, and was surprised to see that I gave it a B-. I definitely don't remember it being that good, but I also didn't go back and watch it over again, so maybe it was. What I do remember about it was that it had problems sticking to one narrative. I was really into the poltergeist story that it was telling in the beginning, but as soon as it got invested in that, the show switched it up on me and became just straight up black trauma porn. And you gotta remember, this came out not too long after Lovecraft Country and a bunch of other shows and movies that were trying to do the same thing. So I think at the time that I watched it, I was just tired of all the shows of us being beat down and oppressed. So with all that said, You'll have to excuse me if I went into season 2 with less than enthusiastic apprehension. Would it be more of the same and make the racial aspects outweigh the horror? Or would it completely ignore the first season and try to distance itself as far away from it as possible? The answer to both of those questions is a resounding no. And them season 2, The Scare, I feel, is a massive improvement over the original. Almost coming across like it was made by two different people, despite having the same creator and some of the same actors. In season two, Deborah Ayorende returns, this time as LAPD detective Don Reeve. Apparently, not just the only black detective they have, but also apparently the only woman. That might not have been a problem now, but seeing as them, the scare is set in 1991, that could be a problem, especially while she's trying to solve the case of a string of murders by an apparent serial killer. But I right, enough about me rambling about the details. Like I said, I'll just be listing three likes and dislikes about the show and there will be some spoilers for those who haven't seen it yet. I didn't do any deep research for this video or anything like I normally do, this is just me giving my thoughts. So with no further delay, here's three likes and dislikes about Them Season 2, The Scare. Number 3 My number 3 like about Them Season 2 is the setting. Like I mentioned before, it's set in 1991 LA, surrounded with the backdrop of the Rodney King beating. Speaking of beating, the show beats you over the head with it right from the beginning, but you know what? Unlike season one, it does not get in the way of the main story this time around. It feels like the showrunners made a conscious effort to keep it as a backdrop and not have it dominate the plot. Instead, it's used in clever ways, like when the detectives go to interview people. Naturally, all the minorities hate the white cops and refuse to work with them. But with Don being the only black detective, this setting also ensures that the black residents especially hate her because she's a black cop, black cop, black cop. and what they perceive to be a white man's institution. And you know what? They're right because Reeves' colleagues treat her like absolute shit. I just like the fact that they only make a few mentions of the Rodney King thing and then it's barely mentioned after that. They let the effects of it play into the story, but it's not constantly called back to or made the backbone of the story. It's just a way for our main character to have some adversity. Also, since this is 1991, we get all kinds of cool music and outfits and hairstyles and stuff. Just that whole 90s aesthetic that I have fond memories of. The setting was a great choice. I dig it. Which brings me to my number two like, which is the cast. In season two, less is more, and the show is carried by like five people versus what seemed like countless character introductions in the first season. First, I got to acknowledge Foxy Brown, Sheba Baby, Flower Child Coffin herself, Pam Greer, in an amazing performance as Don Reeves' mother, Athena. Let me say this, Pam Greer has some Lifetime Achievement Awards already, but in my opinion, she should have way more. What's it gonna take for this woman to get more recognition for having a 50 plus year career on film? Granted, she lives kind of a secluded life these days, but she deserves way more flowers. Anyway, with that out of the way, she graduated into grandma status a long time ago, but she plays it well, and this may be one of her more emotional roles I've ever seen her in. Of course, an actor is only as good if they have somebody great to play off of, and Deborah Ayorende is the best tag team partner she could have asked for. Make that two-time tag team champ, because she shined the brightest in the first season also. 
She plays Don Reeve completely different than she played Mama Emery in the first season, and she's one of the few actresses today who conveys emotion through her eyes and facial expressions. Aya Rende is definitely one of the more underrated actresses today, and she convincingly put me in her shoes while watching this show. Anytime an actor can take me through the full range of emotions, then they have talent. At times, I really felt compassion for her. Then other times, she had me mad as hell. But then later, I'm terrified of her, followed by happiness. She covers it all, seemingly effortlessly. I'm hoping that this gets her way more projects, and I've seen people advocating for her to be the new storm in the MCU. I'm definitely here for that. Not to say that everybody else in the show is terrible. Don's son Kelvin, played by Joshua Williams, does well enough, but it feels like they didn't really know where to insert him into the story. Like it feels like they wanted Don to have a son, but it also feels like they made that decision after they wrote everything already. It's the same situation with his dad and Don's estranged husband, played by Iman Shumpert. Granted, he's not really a trained actor, so I didn't really expect Denzel levels of acting. Plus, they limited his own screen time to hide his flaws, so what little we do see of him is good enough. At no point while watching them season 2 did I think a character took me out of the show, so that's always a plus. And I didn't even mention the MVP of the cast yet. No, I saved that for my number one like of them, the scare. The villain. Oh man, the villain. Let me say this, I've been advocating for stronger black horror villains for a long time now. I feel like we can't just keep going back to Candyman. People have been using Candyman as the go-to black villain that black people are terrified of forever, and it's long overdue for us to have a replacement. In steps Luke James as Edmund Gaines. This guy is the true MVP of the show. To be honest, I haven't seen most of the stuff that this guy did before this, and all I knew him from was playing Johnny Gill in the new edition and Bobby Brown movies. But here, Luke James made a lifetime fan out of me. Them season two had me a little bit worried for a second because I thought they were gonna pull a season one on me and build up a bunch of goodwill only to pull a rug out and ruin the villain. But they nailed it. Nailed it twice, actually. Let me explain. In the first half of the show, Edmund Gaines is an aspiring actor taking auditions that he keeps bombing while working a dead-end job at a showbiz type restaurant. I guess these days they call it Chuck E. Cheese, but it was showbiz when I was growing up. Eventually, he gets the idea to try out auditioning for a horror villain, and with a guy who already has some mental issues, it probably wasn't the best idea for him to go all method. Watching Edmund's slow descent into madness is highly entertaining, and Luke James is simultaneously sympathetic and absolutely terrifying, portraying a misunderstood outcast with a shady past. This alone would have been enough for me if Edmund was just a run-of-the-mill black serial killer with a very believable serial killer name. But them season 2 decides to keep the supernatural theme going and has Edmund become a real life evil spirit. In my head I kept thinking, how are they going to tie all this Edmund story to these crazy killings where clearly something otherworldly was going on? And what did they do? Well, they basically turned Edmund into a black Freddy Krueger. I'm not being funny when I say that. Look at the parallels. Both Freddy and Edmund has had a troubled and shady past. Both became killers and are tracked down before being killed. Edmund by suicide and Freddy by being burned alive. Both are approached by an evil spirit who tells them to give up their souls in exchange for power. And both become evil entities, one that can attack you in your dreams and the other who can attack you whenever, as long as you have a certain amount of trauma. Yeah, that basically makes Edmund another trauma monster, but at least he's one that's actually real and can attack you physically and not just emotionally. And if you think I'm going overboard with the Freddy comparisons that allow me to introduce into evidence the fact that the show uses the same exact font and effect that A Nightmare on M Street used in the 80s, the horror icon was definitely a big influence. I can't say enough great things about this character. We need more of this and less slave ghosts. Well, that's all the things I loved about the show. What don't I like? Well, for starters, my number three dislike is I don't like how they forced a connection to the previous season. I would have been just fine with this season standing on its own, but I understand that they want it to be an anthology series with a connection, as flimsy as it is. So turns out, this takes place in the same universe as season one, just many years later. One of the daughters from the first season, the one with the color and identity issues, ended up having twins and for reasons, decided to give them up for adoption. Those twins end up being Don Reeve and Edmund Gaines. 
Yep, the main protagonist and the villain are brother and sister. Yeah, it's somewhat lazy, but at the same time, I get that they needed a reason for the two of them to come together. But when you really think about it, don't they already have a way? He became a killer, and she's a detective. Had they kept Edmund human, that would have been reason enough for them to interact. But as it stands, it feels like the only reason they were related is because the show needed a way to tie both characters to season one. I don't like it because it introduces so many other questions, like what happened to the rest of the family from season one? I guess we'll get those answers in season three. My number two dislike is the boyfriend. I bet a lot of you who watched this just went, what boyfriend? Exactly. Talk about undercooked. Technically, he's not even a boyfriend. He's Don's lover. His whole reason for existing is to display Don as a control freak, giggity, and somebody afraid to love again after being separated from her husband. She doesn't want to give this poor guy a chance, and them season two expects us to care or feel bad for him when he gets rejected for asking for more. The problem is, if you wanted us to feel for dude, you kinda had to put him in more episodes and make him a bigger part of what was going on. Not giving like eight minutes of total screen time across like two episodes, Make no mistake about it, Don is a strong female lead done the right way, but making her so strong made a male companion kind of redundant. There's no way he was coming to save the day at any point in this series, and because of that, I feel like he's pretty much useless. More time could have been dedicated to something else, like Don's relationship with her husband and why they aren't together anymore. I think that was more important. And my number one dislike I have for season two is the literal red herring. This one is kind of a double dislike. The first is the unrealism of the case itself. The detectives are trying to track down a killer who bends and breaks their victims in crazy contorted ways. And at first, you can kind of imagine a real person doing this. That is, until you take a look at their faces. Ain't no way, bruh. The detectives act like they don't see this shit. There's nothing practical or realistic about this that says that a human can do this. This is straight out of a movie like The Ring. Even in situations where there's no way the death was done by human hands, they cling to the fact that it has to be a real person. And I get it. In this world, it's impossible for people to accept the supernatural, same as it would be hard for us to believe it. But Detective Reeve herself experiences weird happenings the deeper she gets into the case. So it's just a little unbelievable that she's so sure that the killer is actually a racist red-haired detective she works with named McKinney, played by Jeremy Ball. Now the McKinney character is a great frontman for the LAPD racism that's sprinkled throughout the season, but the idea that he's the red-haired man that all the victims are so terrified of is beyond far-fetched. Not to mention the idea that there's no way he can physically pull off the murders. Which brings me to my second dislike. The design of the Edmund monster itself. Like I said earlier, the killer ends up being Edmund reborn as a giant red-haired trauma monster, finally getting that horror role he wanted so badly when he was alive. But I really wish they went with a different design, with more franchise potential. Edmund, as a regular guy, was terrifying enough, and a variation on how he already looked would have probably sufficed. But instead, they modeled him after a raggedy Andy doll. No, I'm not making that up. Athena tells a story earlier about how when they were babies, they came to her with two Raggedy Ann and Andy dolls. Dawn grew out of hers, but Edmund never did and refused to let anybody take it. I'm assuming the evil entity appears to his host as whatever they're most attached to or traumatized by. But I really wish they wrote in a clause that said the character didn't have to eventually look that way also. It's not the worst design in the world, but I had built up so much anticipation on what the monster would eventually look like, and when it was revealed, I was massively let down. And maybe that's just me and my expectations. It's hard to really nitpick it though, because them season two, The Scare, is a fantastic follow-up to an underwhelming season one that I had completely written off after watching only one time. I don't know where they can go from here, but the bad thing about an anthology show is that when you finally hit on the foundations of something good, it sucks that you have to move on from it to something potentially much worse. As you all know, I don't give grades for modern movies and TV shows anymore, and instead, I give it a watch now, watch later, or watch whenever. And them season two, The Scare, is an easy watch now. If the creator, Little Marvin, ever sees this, I want him to know that I would throw crazy amounts of money at a horror franchise with these characters in it. 
And that's it for me in this video. As usual, let me know what you thought about them season 2, The Scare, in the comments below. And if you liked the video, don't forget to drop a like, a share, and a subscribe, and tell your friends about my channel. And until next time, I'll holla at you.